Okay, let's talk about math words and terms. And I'm saying here, 10% of math students know these words. I'm talking about all of these words. So um, I'm going to show you the list here, and then I want to I want you to think about these words and just try to define each one of these without, you know, doing a quick search or looking in your math book. Just ask yourself, are you familiar with these terms? Do you know what they mean? Okay, so we got math words and terms. I'm going to look at, uh, I'm going to show you this list here in just one second, but don't feel bad if you don't know all these, okay? Again, most students don't know or don't remember the vocabulary, okay? A lot of stuff they learn in math, they kind of recognize it and they kind of know what to do with it, but it's important that you do know, um, you know, the definition of a lot of these terms and words in mathematics because they creep up, all, you know, over time. So that's why it's important to work on building your math vocabulary, but we're going to cover some uh, terms here and uh, definitions that a lot of students, you know, they just kind of like, you know, uh, they're not so common and they just don't kind of remember a lot of this stuff. But no problem. We're going to cover these words here in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And uh, I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, I can help you excel in your math course. Now, if you're taking any test that has math on it, for example, the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, AccuPlacer, ALEC exam, CLEP exam, teacher certification exam, and the course exam, uh, nursing school entrance exam. I can go on and on and on. You get the idea. There's a lot of exams out there that people have to take that have math on it. So if someone thinks math's pretty important. Anyways, I can help you prepare and pass those tests. If you homeschool, I have a great comprehensive homeschool math program. And if you need some math notes, you can use mine. I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video, but I've been uh, teaching math for decades. I'm telling you right now, there's just no way you can excel at math without taking great math notes. Just think about the words that we're going to cover here, right? We're going to cover a lot of specific terms and definitions. If you don't write those down, there's just no way you can just kind of remember this stuff. So start taking better math notes. You will thank me later. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get into it. So I'm going to show you some of these words here. And you could start putting your uh, answers, if you know any of these, in the comments section. And people can kind of compare. So just be careful if you're reading other people's comments whether they got it right or wrong. Okay, just put in what you think. And by the way, you don't have to have the most technical definition to these words. Right? As long as you have a basic working definition, I think that's uh, where it really uh, counts. So here I got more words. So we, uh, the first word is coefficient. The second one is collinear. Then we have conjugate. The next one is discriminant. Uh, the next one is inconsistent system. Okay, then we have quotient, and then uh, we have radicand and index, and then the last one is relation. So these are just some random words, but I was kind of going through uh, math glossary, and I'm thinking, you know, uh, these are very important terms, but a lot of students don't, you know, remember the actual technical uh, word to these. But it's important that you do. By the way, I um, kind of failed to say, but let me say this now. Uh, these words are kind of like in the um, algebra, basic high school algebra and uh, geometry level. Okay, so if you haven't taken these courses before, then some of this stuff may not uh, be familiar, uh, not familiar to you. Don't worry about it. You know, again, you know, stick around here for a second and, uh, you know, um, I'll go ahead and define these terms, even if you haven't taken these courses. So, again, uh, go ahead and put uh, into the comment section anything that you think you might know. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and start revealing these words here and the definitions of them. So let's get into it. And here I kind of have like a little uh, kind of, uh, you know, overview of what these um words represent in a, you know, I wrote something down to kind of associate this word. Okay. So coefficient. All right. So here I have three X squared. Uh, one, what something involved here. Okay. Is the coefficient. Do you remember what that word is? Well, if you said, is it the three, you would be correct. I'd have to give you a little check mark. Very good. So a coefficient is the number part of an algebraic term. It's as simple as that. 
Okay, so uh, again, uh, most of you out there have taken, like even pre-algebra, have learned this. Okay, you have learned this word coefficient, so don't be like, I never learned that. Yes, you did. You just forgot that, but don't worry about it now. Hopefully, you'll remember this. Okay, so let's talk about a geometry word here, collinear. Collinear. Now, just like when you learn like um, uh, vocabulary and whatnot, you kind of like maybe... Uh, you know, pick up on, try to look at the word and define it. So all linear is like, what? What's the root word there? It means line. And then co, like, hmm, maybe is that like together, like, um, like together, a line. Maybe that's kind of like uh, somewhat of the meaning. Well, yeah, okay, here's a line. And so points that are on the same line, we call those uh, points collinear. Okay, so that's what that means. All right, so some of the stuff you can kind of figure out by just, you know, well, looking at the word and thinking, hmm, what does that kind of mean? Well, that's what this means, okay? All right, let's move on to our next one here, conjugate. Now, this is an important word, okay, especially for you uh, out there taking algebra. So kind of a more technical definition of a conjugate is if we have real numbers A and B, if we have A plus B, A minus B is a conjugate. So A minus B, A plus B is its conjugate. Let me give you a quick example of this. So let's say I had, um, here's where the conjugate really comes in. It comes in, especially when you're dealing with radicals and complex numbers. So if I had like the square root of 3 plus 7, okay, this right here is a no-no in algebra. So I'm going to have to fix this up. So I have to fix this up by multiplying by the conjugate. Okay, see the square root of 3? So I would take the square root of 3 minus 7. This is the conjugate. I have to multiply this by the square root of 3 minus 7. Now, some of you out there would know to do this step. You just may not remember what the, that term is called, okay, or what this is actually called. Hopefully, uh, you know, a lot of you do remember that. But anyways, that is an example of the conjugate, and it comes up, again, in different forms, especially like complex numbers, etc. All right, let's move on to our next word, discriminant. Okay, so here is the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, but what is that? Okay, well, if, if you are a subscriber to my channel, I just did a uh, video not too long ago about the discriminant. Matter of fact, I've done a couple uh, videos about the discriminant. It's a very, very important part of the what? Well, I'm going to draw this out or write this out at rather b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So what is this? Okay, well, if you said this is the quadratic formula, well, you know, that's pretty awesome. You'd be absolutely correct. This part underneath the square root in the quadratic formula is called the discriminant. It has all kinds of unique properties about it. So this is not the video to go into it, but again, very, very important, something you need to know. And uh, this is not to be confused with a determinant. Okay, there's another word in mathematics called a determinant that has to do with matrices. This is the discriminant. All right, let's move on, okay, to our next uh, term or phrase, inconsistent system, an inconsistent system. Well, this is a system, a linear system that has no solution, no solution. So let's say, oops, oh, whoa, 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 kind of went too far here. Uh, let me see if I could just draw a little example of this. We'll erase all this other stuff because we've already defined that. So... It's a uh, y equals 2x plus 1, and I am going to, let's see, y equals uh, 2x minus 3. Okay, so this is an example of a linear system. Now let's just uh, kind of see what you know about linear equations and lines. What's the slope of this line? Well, it's 2, okay? So this is a line with a slope of 2. This is a line that has a slope of 2 as well, but they're two different lines. So graphically speaking, these lines are going like this, okay? So these lines never cross, never intersect because they are parallel with one another, right? So uh, a linear system, when it has a unique solution, that is the point where two lines cross, intersect at that one unique point. If they never intersect, like in this situation, that's inconsistent system, there's no solution. Now, a lot of you uh, would be like, hey, you know, there's no solution to the system. That's fine. But you, again, you want to know these terms, all right? They are, um, you know, they're definitely in math books and they come up, um, you know, even on standardized tests, you might see, you know, uh, you, they might not use the words, no solution. They might say, hey, inconsistent system. Okay, so let's uh, move forward. And this one right here, 
this is like a more basic math term. Again, you've learned this, but you probably forgot. But a quotient is the result of doing division. Okay, so if I go to uh, 8 divided by 2 and, and my answer is 4, that is the quotient. Okay, so the quotient is the result of doing division. Matter of fact, most of you out there probably remember that, but just like, oh, yeah, there's uh, that quotient thing. Uh, you know, what is that? Well, that's what it was, right? So some of this, you know, some of this terminology even goes gets into basic math, arithmetic. All right, let's get into our next one. Okay, so the radicand and index. Okay, so let's say I have the cube root of 8. The cube root of 8 is what? Well, it's going to be 2, right? Because 2 times 2 times 2 is going to be 8. All right, so one of these is the radicand, one is the index. Do you know which is which? Well, the index is this little number up here. So in this case, the index is 3. And this part right here, this A, is the radicand. Okay, this is the radicand, and this is the index. Okay, so in this case, 8 is the radicand, and this is the index. So these are, you know, uh, definitely you know, important terms, uh, vocabulary when you're studying radicals, okay? So a radical is this thing. It's not just a square root, okay? What is the index of a square root? Well, it's a 2, okay? But we just don't write that 2. Uh, again, you know, uh, all this stuff, if you haven't learned it yet in algebra, you definitely will. All right, let's finish up with our last uh, term, and that is a relation. So, I, you know, again, I gave you a little bit of a hint here. So a relation is a set of ordered pairs, okay? This is very, very important. You can kind of think of this of relation. Let me just go down here real quick. So relation is when you're getting into studying functions, okay? So here's x, y, and we have some uh, points here, okay, floating out here on the x, y coordinate plane. So let's say this is, I don't know, uh, uh, 5, 3, and this one over here is, um, oh, I don't know, uh, 9, 6, and this one is 3, 6, and this one is 6, negative 3, okay? All these uh, ordered pairs, this is an ordered pair, okay? In other words, it's a pair of numbers. There is a specific order. The first is x, the second is y. Now you can think of them as x, y points, but all together, 1, 2, 3, Four, if I look at this as a set, so let's say three, that's a terrible three. I'm going to write that again. Three, six, uh, nine, six, uh, five, three, and uh, six, negative three. If I look at, if I just take the set of all of these order pairs, then I'm talking about a uh, relation. Now, some relations are functions, okay? And that's a whole, whole other uh, different discussion. So... Uh, all functions are relations, some relations are functions, and functions, uh, this kind of notation in mathematics, extremely, extremely important. Uh, I've done a ton of uh, videos on functions. So again, um, we're going to go and wrap this up now, but the one thing you need to know is the following, okay, is that all these words, okay, aren't, you know, just because you didn't know them, a lot of you probably knew what to do with them, okay? You're like, oh, yeah, I didn't remember the word, but you like division, okay? You know how to divide, or it's not as important that you remember that your answer uh, is a quotient. Well, you know, I do think it's somewhat important, okay? You want to continue to try to build your uh, math vocabulary, okay? And the only way you're going to be able to do that is by taking great notes, right? And try to just associate this, because you just never know when, uh, you know, some technical words will pop up and, you know, the... Uh, on a quiz or a test or whatnot, and they kind of expect you to know this stuff. So hopefully this little random pop quiz was fun, okay? I know a lot of you are like, fun? This wasn't fun, but if it was informative, if it was useful in some way, please go ahead and consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. have over 1,000 plus math videos, basic to advanced mathematics. My goal is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. So if you like my teaching style, check out all my content. And, uh, you know, of course, I post uh, weekly to YouTube. Quite a few videos, by the way. And I try to spread it around basic math, calculus, geometry. Uh, but my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.